Although Mars has been the choice destination for most researchers and science fiction authors dreaming of a time when humanity might finally be able to explore the solar system, in recent years we've discovered that Mars is actually quite hostile to life. We've known for a while that Mars is a cold, dead world, but more than that, the surface seems to be completely toxic to life. And that's not even considering the damage that low Martian gravity might do to the human body or the logistics of supplying a colony there. It definitely seems like without some major technological advancements, Mars might be out of reach. So if Mars is inviolable, where can we go? Well, what about Venus? Back in the 1960s, 70s, and 80s, the Russians sent several probes to Venus and all of them failed long enough to beam back some haunting photos of the blistering hot surface before finally being crushed by the immense pressure. But a new approach may prove that Venus is the best candidate for colonization in the solar system, at least right now. I'm Eric Malachite, author of Echoes of Olympus Mons and Mind's Horizon, and this is Science Get. Sure, at 800 degrees Celsius, it's a bit of an understatement to say that the surface is hot. But 45 to 65 kilometers above the Venusian surface, temperatures even out, and the pressure comes down to one bar. And because oxygen weighs less than carbon dioxide, it will float the same way that helium does on Earth. Not only that, but even at 65 kilometers above the surface, there is still plenty of atmosphere to protect against harmful solar and cosmic radiation. And because the pressure is similar to Earth, the suits worn by our new Venusian residents won't need to be pressurized. Recently, NASA unveiled an incredible plan for how we could put balloon cities on Venus. The current plan from NASA, called HAVOC, is to establish cloud cities in five phases. HAVOC stands for High Altitude Venus Operational Concept. Phase 1 would involve exploring the upper atmosphere with unmanned airships. Phase 2 would put two astronauts in orbit around Venus. Phase 3 would have an astronaut riding the atmospheric currents for 30 days, with Phase 4 following up for a year-long ride. And Phase 5 would involve the permanent settlement of the planet. The airships NASA is proposing would be outfitted with propellers, solar panels, and instruments to measure Venus's atmosphere, and at 50 kilometers above the surface would receive 40% more energy from the Sun than here on Earth. Each mission would feature a multi-stage rocket to get our astronauts back into orbit when their time on Venus is up. Once they're back in orbit, they would meet up with another spacecraft and return to Earth. Balloon cities on Venus would have a major advantage over the ideas that have been proposed for settling Mars. For one, because they wouldn't have to be pressurized, and a breach wouldn't cause the whole habitat to implode. Instead, what you would end up with is a gradual mixing of the habitat's atmosphere and the Venusian atmosphere until a crew would be able to be dispatched to patch the breach. But Venus's atmosphere is extremely acidic, and any balloon city deployed into its atmosphere would have to be protected from these roaming clouds of acid. Fortunately, when the Russians deployed their probes in the 60s, 70s, and 80s, they outfitted the balloons to slow the craft's descent in the atmosphere with Teflon. As a result, the balloons remained resistant of the harsh effects of Venus's atmosphere and allowed one of the probes to remain floating in the atmosphere for two days. Teflon is incredibly tough. And since its accidental creation, scientists have been unable to find a substance that can harm it. But don't set your sights on Venus just yet. There still remain challenges to overcome before we can start sending airships to Venus. Namely, the airships themselves. We've never sent an airship to another planet before. The Havoc proposal suggests that the craft would be folded up into a launch shroud and would enter the atmosphere at over 25,000 kilometers an hour. Once inside the atmosphere, they would deploy a parachute, shed their protective aeroshell, and begin to unfurl and inflate with helium. If nothing goes wrong during their descent, then the airship should settle about 50 kilometers above the surface. There is one problem with this, however. The solar panels on the airships would need to be protected. So could Teflon work in this case too? Actually, yes, it could. In fact, Teflon is probably the best option for protecting those precious solar cells. And some of them are basically made of the stuff. Okay, so what about getting back into orbit the way Havoc envisions it? Well, that may be a hurdle for the team to overcome. 
and the very reason why Venus is ideal for long-term occupation, its gravity, is going to make it that much harder to return our astronauts to orbit, whereas Mars' gravity is 62% that of Earth, meaning the rockets would need less power and fuel to break free and return to orbit. On Venus, a multi-stage rocket is the most likely option, but how would you accomplish that 50 kilometers above the surface? Though it's important to note that developing new technologies and solving problems like this is not a challenge alien to NASA or any of the privatized space companies looking to put humans on other worlds. New technologies are going to have to be developed, no matter where we set our sights. But perhaps the biggest hurdle for the Havoc team to overcome is price. The team hasn't come up with a price tag for all this just yet. But more than likely, it would be an extremely expensive operation. While I'm of the opinion personally that Mars isn't currently viable for us, the team behind Havoc aren't so certain. They're not saying that NASA should abandon their plans for other manned missions throughout the solar system. Their airship proposal has picked up interest in the scientific community, however, especially from those researchers who want to understand how Venus evolved. It's thought that billions of years ago, Venus was very similar to Earth, so answering how it turned into the hellscape it is today is an important question, especially considering the changes we're witnessing in Earth's climate now. As Havoc picks up more and more support at NASA, we may see the narrative in the media shift from landing human boots on Mars to putting airships on Venus, and frankly, I can't wait for that day. I only hope it happens within my lifetime. I hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure to leave it a like and let me know what you think a Cloud City might be like in the comments. And make sure you smash that subscribe button and ring that bell to receive notifications for new ScienceGet videos. I'm Eric Malachite, and I will see you next time.